the Xiaomi Mi TV Stick is the younger brother of the TV box and wants to compete with it. But which one will be the best for you, the TV Stick or the TV box? Stay to find out. Intro and we begin. Hello friends, if you have seen my previous videos then you already know the advantages that the Android TV operating system offers you and personally it is my first choice in a smart TV. But not everyone has the possibility of having a smart TV at home, that's why many people are turning to some devices that improve their experience in front of their TVs. In this video I showed you an interesting analysis that I did to the Xiaomi TV box and in this one I did 10 different tests to see its versatility, but if you haven't seen them, here are those videos on the cards. But watch them, don't fool me, eh? Look what Ricky brought me, the younger brother of the TV box, the Xiaomi Mi TV Stick, and today we'll perform a complete analysis and all the tests that I like to do, so stay until the end to see what it won or lost from this older brother, and why and what for I recommend buying it. And as you see, Rick's already desperate to try the TV Stick. I'm coming, Rick, don't be anxious. Right from the box, you can see the quality of Xiaomi products, with the glossy and plasticized graphic details. After opening the box, we'll find a sandwich-type packaging, where you'll find a TV stick in two-tone black plastic, glossy and satin, and with a single micro-USB port, the power cable, the power adapter, and it brings its fine remote control quite beautiful and practical very similar to the TV box. And these are all the components in the box. The TV stick doesn't compete with the TV box, since it has fewer resources and that's why it's cheaper. Its main objective is streaming and reproduction of content, and it does it very well. But it's not for demanding users. On regards his older brother, the Mi Box S, the specifications of the TV sticks are as follows. A 4-core processor but an older version is the Amlogic S805Y. It only has 1GB of RAM, 8GB of storage, but without possibility of expanding because it has no ports. And it can only handle a maximum resolution of 1920x1080, that is, Full HD at 60Hz. In this channel, it's very important to check the quality of the components, so I opened my TV stick to see how it is built. With a little force opening, it's very simple. It is just a matter of removing the top cover and that's it. We must remove the connector from the Wi-Fi antenna to be able to completely remove the card, and this is all the mystery that the Xiaomi TV stick contains. This black box is aluminium and serves as a heat sink for the processor. This is a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi communications chip, its antenna output and a small LED that indicates that the stick is on. Although it's true the TV stick doesn't have many resources, it's incredible they integrate all that technology and an operating system in a small 1x3-inch card. For the price, it is enough to resurrect an old television. Now, let's install it. Which is very easy since it only has a single micro USB input and the other end will go directly to an HDMI port on our television, although it recommends to do it lateral so it doesn't collide with the wall. Then we just plug in the power adapter. And we can go to the settings. Setting up the TV stick is very easy, just pair the Bluetooth remote, choose our language and if our country doesn't appear in region, choose one with the same time zone. If you want, you can configure your TV stick with your phone, but this time I won't do it. That's why first I'll get connected to my Wi-Fi network. Then it will ask you to log in with your Google account. Here you will have two options, using your cell phone or your remote control. If you choose your cell phone, you must enter this code on that web page or doing it with the remote control, you must enter from your TV screen. And if you activated the security in your account, you will receive a validation to your cell phone. From here, you have to accept all the following screens to complete the configuration. You can even remove some pre-installed applications you don't want to have. 
Finally, the wizard will start and you use have to click accept the terms and conditions and voila! You already have the TV stick running Android TV on your TV. First thing you should do is go into information and verify which version of Android TV your TV stick arrived with, as you'll see mine is version 9. Then you've got to look for updates and curiously there is a system update. But don't get excited, it's not version 10 of Android TV, it's only an update of the kernel and the security patch of Android, but still do it for the system to work better. After updating and restarting, if we go back into information, we'll see that we still have Android TV 9. But the patch and kernel are now recent. To confirm the resolution the TV stick can give us, we enter Preferences, then Screen then screen resolution and here in playback mode. Here we can see that the TV stick is at its maximum resolution of exit. Remember that the Xiaomi TV stick can only handle video up to full HD at 60Hz, so if you decide on it, forget about 4K. But that doesn't have to be a problem, as I'll explain later. Since its processor is less powerful, it consumes less power, which is an advantage because it can work without the power adapter and be connected directly to a USB port on the TV to be powered from there, therefore it will be truly portable. But be careful that the USB port has at least one amp of output current, so it won't be overloaded and the TV stick receives the current it needs and works properly. Did you know that after finishing each video and before uploading it, I show it to my mother on a TV and take note of what she didn't understand to edit it again? She's my quality control, and if she understands it, being elder and doesn't know much about technology, then anyone will do it, my brother. This is the format of my explanatory content, so subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell so it alerts you to each new video I upload. Thank you. Many users comment that it gets very hot after the long-term use, so we'll do a real test. Cap list and straight to the processor. We will connect it and let it play 24 hours continuously. After a day of work, I took the temperature of the processor and as you'll see, this stabilized at about 60 degrees Celsius. It's high, but thanks to the heat sink that absorbs and dissipates the heat of the processor, it's not critical. Also, I don't think you need to use the TV stick 24 hours continuously. Time comes to compare it with its older brother, the TV box. Of course, always under the careful supervision of technological rig. So I will install each device on a different TV and run some performance tests. Having both computers on, I will do a general restart at the same time. This will give you an idea of how long it takes to load the Android TV operating system and be ready. As you can see, the TV box has some advantage over the TV stick. Here, more power of the TV box processor is evidenced to move Android TV more fluidly, but it's only a small difference since it won by only 6 seconds. Regarding the configuration options, I could see that all the settings are exactly the same for both devices, since the TV stick already comes with Android TV 9. Be careful, you can only connect your TV stick via Wi-Fi, since it doesn't have any other input port, not even USB. But what's good is that it can be connected to the two frequency bands of 2.4 and 5 GHz. In addition, its Wi-Fi is quite stable, and I would dare to say that even better than the TV box. And perhaps this is because the TV stick integrates a small RF antenna, which gives its better reception. Now I'll try to get into Netflix at the same time. And as you can see, it was almost simultaneously. Even while browsing, I didn't feel a significant difference. That's because the TV stick has been built for this, for streaming content. Not to squeeze it out. I'll do the same with Movistar Play, entering at the same time. Even here, the TV stick won slightly. Browsing the channels and playing content is very similar on both devices. Honestly, for these functions, I don't find a big difference. I usually watch national channels this way for hours, and I haven't had drops. Of course, this will also depend on your bandwidth or client contracted. I have an internet of about 30 Mbps. That shows that its strength is the reproduction of streaming content. 
since this doesn't consume a lot of memory, nor requiring a lot of processing, as games and heavier applications do. Now, and also simultaneously, I'll go to Play Store and download and install the Pluto TV application to both devices. As you can see, once again the TV box wins by a tight margin, which in my opinion is negligible. And when opening and browsing the application, both have a very similar performance. Remember that both processors are from the same Amlogic brand, and although the TV box is better, it only has a 10 or 15% improvement in performance. Although you can download some applications like this, don't abuse, don't forget that the TV stick only has 8 gigs of internal storage, which will remain only about 5 gigs due to the use of Android. And we can't expand its storage either. That's why I can't perform some more demanding tests, because the hardware of the TV stick doesn't allow it. Remember that the TV stick also has a unique remote control function. This is found in Preferences and then HDMI SAC. And in order to use it, the first option must be activated. Thanks to this function, you won't even need a TV stick control, since you can control your TV and the TV stick with the same remote control. Of course, as long as the TV also has its function activated from these settings. Okay, it's true, the TV stick has fewer resources than the TV box S, that's why it costs less. And that's why it's also oriented to a specific sector of users. Don't be discouraged, don't see all hardware and all power when sometimes it's not always needed. For example, if you have a large 4K TV in your living room, the Xiaomi TV Box S would be more convenient for you, because it plays in 4K, you can expand its memory and it has better performance. But for a TV that is not 4K, or for a non-advanced user who only wants to watch movies and series, it doesn't justify the cost of a TV box. So here a TV stick is better and cheaper that lets you to watch content from YouTube, Netflix, Movistar Play, DirecTV Go, IPTV channels or any streaming service because that is its strength. I especially bought it for my mother's room, since connected to her 40-inch full HD TV, she can watch all her favorite series and movies from the comfort of her room, converting a simple obsolete TV into a good smart TV with certified Android TV and at very low price. Therefore, despite its limitations, this TV stick is not a bad product, it all depends on which user it is aimed at. That is the target user of this device. So for the price it has, do not demand more processing, because each user has their own needs. If you made it this far and you are new, it's because you liked the video, then give me a like, subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell to alert you to each new video I upload. And don't forget to visit my channel, I have a lot of explanatory content with this format, I know you'll find them very interesting and if you are creative, look at my projects. Help me and democratize technology. Until next video.